Hi there, I'm Kathleen Jasper, and today we're going over the SLLA 6990. I'm going to do an overview of the content categories on the exam and explain those a little bit, and then we're going to work through some practice test questions. Let's get started. The SLLA 6990 is the leadership exam, and it can be very daunting. It's a big test, and it should be because you are going to become an assistant principal or a principal, so it's going to test your knowledge in a lot of different areas. Let's hop over to my presentation so I can show you the breakdown of the exam and a couple of practice test questions. The SLLA 6990 is broken up into seven content categories, and that's going to be strategic leadership at 20 questions, which comes out to be about 13% of the exam. Then we have instructional leadership. This is the biggest part of the multiple choice portion of the exam, 27 questions, and that's going to be 17% of the entire exam. Cultural and climate leadership, 22 questions, about 13% of the exam. Ethical leadership, 19 questions, 12% of the exam. Organizational leadership, 16 questions, 10% of the exam. Community engagement leadership, 16 questions, 10% of the exam. And then this final content category here, number seven, analysis constructed response. This is where you're going to take all of these content categories and apply them to four essay questions. So this is what people tend to really stress out about are the constructed response questions. But if you have a good understanding about the seven content categories, you should be able to answer the constructed response questions. This is a big chunk of the exam at 25 percent. So you can't just flake on the writing portion. You have to really work on that. Now let's go through these content categories quickly so you understand a little bit more. Strategic leadership right here is all going to be about school goals, mission, vision, engaging with stakeholders to kind of come up with that mission, mission and vision for your school. So this is kind of a big picture type of leadership and how you engage the community in that process. Instructional leadership, and the reason why there are so many questions for this particular portion of the multiple choice, is that instructional leadership is very, very important when we become building administrators. So it's not just about keeping the environment safe and clean, which is a big part of leadership, but it's also about making sure that all instructional decisions are data-driven and that you are helping teachers align their instruction to academic standards. You're always working with those goals in mind, both state, federal, and local level goals. And we are always thinking about closing the achievement gap, making sure all students are achieving in our schools. So that's a big one on the exam. Climate and cultural leadership here is all about the type of culture you have in your school and how you foster a positive, welcoming, inclusive culture in the school. And that's done through supporting students, supporting teachers, seeing diversity as an asset, making sure that you're seeking out teachers of all different groups so that all of your students are represented in the school, the types of materials you're using, things like that all align with culture and climate leadership. Then ethical leadership here is all about, you know, misconduct. How do we handle uh, teacher misconduct, student misconduct, uh, student rights, teachers' rights, parents' rights? That's all about ethical leadership. Now, organizational leadership here is about the building for the most part. These questions are going to have to do with fire drills, you know, uh, bomb threats, keeping the, the school safe, making sure that you know, the facilities are up to date. You might have a couple of construction questions on there. So organizational leadership is about the organization and really about the building. You will have some other questions in there, but a lot of it has to do with safety and things like that. And then community engagement. This is all about bringing the community in and going out into the community to visit your stakeholders. As instructional leaders, we need to make sure that we aren't just, you know, operating in our little bubble in our offices and making decisions that way. We want to make sure we get out into the community. We have translators when we need. If other students' parents speak different languages, we want to make sure that we are engaging with the community all the time to invite them on committees to make decisions in our schools, to let them know what's going on, 
to communicate data. You know, if we have some new data having to do with, you know, test scores, things like that, we want to engage the community in that. And also building relationships with businesses and other leaders in the community so that our school can thrive along with other organizations in our community. And then, of course, the analysis, the constructed response portion is going to pull from all of these areas. So you're going to get questions that have a little strategic leadership, instructional leadership, climate and culture, ethical and community engagement. It's going to pull from all of those areas. Now let's go over a couple of practice test questions that come from our SLLA 6990 study guide. You can get this on our website and I'll show you more about that at the end of this video. But a lot of times you will get questions with a set of data here and then a big long question with very long answer choices. And I always recommend that we work backwards, especially on the SLLA 6990, because when we work backwards, we can eliminate some of this extra work and we can find patterns in the answer choices. Now, one thing that a lot of people tend to say to me when they ask questions is that all of the answer choices looked like good answer choices or three out of four looked really good. I didn't know which one to pick. So I'm going to show you today how to do that so that you can understand more about this particular process. So let's have a look at this one here. We've got this set of data here. And this is all about reading and math gains. You can see we have the grade level and then the years here. And you might start looking at this chart right off the bat, but I say, do not look at the chart and don't even look at the question yet. Go straight to these answer choices first and see if we can find a really good answer choice and then see if that aligns with the question. Nine times out of 10, you will be able to eliminate a bad answer choice and then zero in on a couple or one single good answer choice. So let's start with A here. Use peer groups by having the third grade team observe the fifth grade team and apply the effective strategies in the classroom. Okay, I like this. This is basically saying that we're going to help third grade teachers work with fifth grade teachers to figure out the best strategies. Not bad. B, acquire an external resource that focuses on math gains to provide support to third and fourth grade teams. Okay, we have this external resource. Now, this is something that you might see on the exam. External resource might be something like uh, find a company to come in or a consultant to come in. These are typically the wrong answer choices. Schools do use consultants. Schools do buy external resources all the time. But on this test, typically, we are going to want to make sure that we are really focusing on what we're doing inside the school with our own teams, with our own resources. So I'm going to cross off B because that's typically not the right answer. C, request some support from district to provide math coaches for the first through fifth grade team. Now, do principals do this request support? Absolutely. But typically on this exam, it is not the correct answer. Again, it is incorrect for the same reason B would be incorrect. We want to take care of things inside of our buildings the best we can. Of course, we reach out to district when we need to, but district is busy. They don't have time and we need to make sure that we are instructional leaders and handle it ourselves. And let's have a look at D here. Using grade level teams, focus on increasing math gains by mapping curriculum to the state assessment specifications while also focusing instruction on the math standards. Okay, this one has a lot of good words in it. First of all, the term standards is used. When we are thinking about increasing gains or increasing student scores, we always want to make sure we focus on the standards because that is what the students are tested on at the end of the year. And here we have this term mapping curriculum. Can't kind of see it there. Let me go ahead and erase a little bit there. There we go. Math curriculum, mapping it. That's a really good word as well because we're going to use the state standards to map curriculum. So we're being very strategic in our approach. And so D looks like it's the best answer here, much better than A, although A is okay. Now notice that all four answer choices are pretty good. And this is where people get confused. They think, well, we would do all of these things. Yes, we would. But it says, which would be the best approach to maximize effectiveness here? And so you're going to want to go with the best answer choice. And D is the best according to all the keywords in there. And you will see this a lot on the test. So be on the lookout. Let's read the question now further working backward. And let's not, you know, think too much about the data yet. Let's work backwards. So the principal of Tall Pines Elementary School wants to ensure that PLCs, so those are professional learning communities, 
are focused on student achievement, particularly in math. According to the data above, which approach uh, should she use to maximize effectiveness? So again, using the state standards mapping curriculum, regardless of the data, is going to help. But you can see here, using grade level teams is always a good thing. Focusing on math gains, the question has to do with math, so that's good. And um, you know, aligning it to the state standards. We want to increase the gains, and you can see here, first grade um, in their math gains haven't gone up very much. Second grade, same thing, kind of stagnant, staying there. Third grade went up quite a bit. They went from 58 to 62, so that's pretty good. Fourth grade, 43 to 46, uh, not great. Fourth grade struggling there. And fifth grade, 72 to 75. Looks like fifth grade's got a good thing going. They're in the 70 percent. That's pretty good. Uh, the biggest gains happened in third grade, but we want to push that even higher. And we want to make sure everybody is, is working here, not just the third grade, not just the fifth grade. We want to move everybody. And that's why D is the best answer. All right, let's have a look at another one. So this had two questions to it, this data set here. So we already know kind of what the data set looks like. We just did the first question. Again, we have a long scenario here. Let's go ahead and have a look at the answer choices first. A, encourage the fifth grade team to come up with a plan for teacher-led professional development to train staff on these methods. I like the term teacher-led professional development. On this exam, you want to encourage teachers to lead the professional development because teachers listen to teachers. And sure, teachers do listen to administrators and school leaders. However, professional development is usually more effective when a peer is leading it. And so I like A, let's keep that. B, inform the staff they will be required to attend professional development. Right away, I'm going to cross this off. This has a punitive vibe to it, requiring, and of course, we do require things, we have to, but on the exam, typically requiring or mandating is not the best answer. We want to empower people to attend professional development, and having it be teacher-led is one way to empower them. So I'm going to cross off B. C, create a math advisory council, okay, I like that, to help teachers who are struggling to increase student gains. Okay, so that one's good too. Math Advisory Council, that means you're kind of forming a committee of math teachers. And that's really good because you're, you know, using kind of a democratic approach. You're not just telling people what to do. You're, you're kind of creating an advisory council. So C looks good. D, offer incentives to the team with the highest gains. Now, do we do this? Do we offer incentives? Those of you who get the highest gains get a, you know, Starbucks gift card for $100 or whatever. Sure. And does it work? Yes. But on the test... External rewards are typically not the correct answer. Again, we want to empower people to do this work without the incentives. Although incentives work, I highly recommend you use them from time to time, but that's not the best answer on the test. So right now I'm between A and C. Let's go ahead and read the question. The principal wants to focus professional development in the areas of both reading and math. She also wants to cultivate buy-in meaning she wants people to say, yeah, I'll do that, from all the teachers on each team. According to the data, what is the most effective way? Well, to create buy-in, teacher-led is going to be the best thing. Now, a math advisory council is good, but it says here she wants it in both reading and math. So be careful. When you're working quickly, you might forget that in the areas of both reading and math were addressed in the question. And you might go with C, because it sounds good, but it only addresses math here. So C would be out leaving A as the best answer. Now, those are just a couple of questions from our study guide. So if you'd like more resources, just head over to KathleenJasper.com, go under my programs and you can click SLLA 6990. We also have the Praxis 5412. They are very similar exams. And when you click that, that will take you to this information page where you can see all of our resources. If you scroll down a little bit, you can see our reviews and some helpful information and links that will help you with the exam. Now we do have the study guide here. We also have an online course and an audio course. If you get the audio course, I do recommend pairing it with the study guide. Now the online course has everything, video tutorials, comprehensive writing practice. It comes with the digital study guide and the audio course. So when you get the online course, you get everything, but let's have a look at the study guide here. You can purchase the 
digital download, which comes in a PDF. It is emailed to you directly to your email address after you purchase. Or if you are interested in the physical copy, you can just click this button here and it'll take you to Amazon. And you can see we have over 252 five-star reviews. People really love this book and it's the physical copy. So if you prefer a physical copy, you can get that on Amazon Prime delivered to you in a couple of days. Now, the physical and digital are exactly the same. So if you need the study guide now and you don't have time to wait for it, go ahead and grab the digital download. Now, our online course for the SLLA 6990 is extremely comprehensive. Like I said before, it comes with the study guide and the audio course, and it has video tutorials, extra practice, everything you need in one place. Now, we also have an audio course that people are really liking, and I, I'm very excited about this. Basically, you can throw it into your headphones, clean your house, walk your dog, whatever, and get a lot of the information there. Now, there are no practice test questions in the audio course. That's why I recommend pairing it with the study guide, or if you want everything, get the online course. But this is a great way to get information and just kind of listen in your car or whatever. I am an auditory learner, so I love audio courses. And so if you're one of those, this will be great for you as well. So remember, we have tons of resources for the SLLA 6990. It is one of my specialties. I have really focused a lot on that exam and know a lot about it. Make sure that if you have any questions or concerns, you can throw them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer those for you. I wish you luck on your exam. Be sure to study. And if you do get the study guide or online course, do everything in those two resources because all of the information is very important. Thank you so much and have an awesome day.